There are a lot of users who believe that Quill Reader was the best social media platform Quill ever had. They are still angry with Google because of the closure of this service in favor of another social media platform called Google Plus, which is dead too. You know, Google is not very good at social media or keeping the service alive, whether it is a messaging service or a programming language. What if you could revive Google Reader yourself? I don't plan to ask you to sign a petition to ask Google restore this old service or teach you programming to create one. I want to introduce a self-hosted platform that you can set up and control yourself. You can have a feed-bearing site for yourself, your family, colleagues or friends. And you can tweet about it and show off your hands-picked feeds like the good old days of Google Reader if you really miss those days or you are still into curating hand-picked feeds. If you want to see how you can do it and whether it's a viable option, keep on watching. Tiny, tiny solution. I'm going to introduce a free self-hosted web app that you can install yourself using Docker. You can control your own data and protect your privacy instead of relying on other third-party services. It's called Tiny Tiny RSS. But it might be tiny, but it has a lot of features under the hood. Tiny Tiny RSS is a free and open-source web-based NeosFeed reader and aggregator that works on both RSS feeds and atom syndication. You can get a cloud server and domain name to host TTRSS, or you can install it locally and browse through your content on your machine or local network. Once you log into your dashboard, you will see a list of your aggregated feeds with all the filtering options. You can choose to see the new articles, your recently viewed ones, or browse through your stored items. You can start the articles, add labels to them as tags, add or edit notes, or click on this icon to include them in your own feed. You can have multiple selections and toggle the read status altogether or add them to your published feed or start items. You can change the view pane layout and how the articles should be organized for your default view. In the Actions menu, you can access to more settings and feed actions. You can search through the articles. You can quickly unsubscribe or subscribe to a feed and set its category. You can see the keyboard shortcuts or change the preferences. There are a lot of things that you can change here. You can change the dark mode or light mode or change the theme completely. You can enable API access if you plan to connect to TTRSS through your own app or website. There are other visual and cosmetic settings that you can play with. In the Feeds tab, you can manage your categories and feeds. You can export them along with your TTRS settings to an OPML file. You can generate a public link for your shared articles. Or you can manage the plugins. There are multiple ways to share stuff. You can export RSS feeds, there are plugins for various social media sites, and sharing by URL is also possible. You can generate a feed of your curated contents in Atom or JSON format and share it with everyone else. They can subscribe to your feed and get updates. Feed URLs are protected using random unique keys, which are specific to each generated feed. The key can be regenerated at any time in validating the previous URL. TTRSS can be expanded using first or third party plugins. You can see a list of them here. TTRSS is not responsible for third party plugins and you have to use them at your own risk.
The same thing applies to the third party teams. You can also manage your filters and labels in the corresponding tabs. and exit the Preferences page once you are done. Beside marking the items with the Share icon, you can share arbitrary web pages to appear as articles in your published feed. Combined with readability, this makes TTRSS function like a read it later kind of website. TTRSS also has an official Android client which can be downloaded from Play Store, and this makes it very cool. It supports offline reading for a very small fee. You can also use other third-party apps to access your public feed. Nowadays, there are a lot of self-hosted projects that can be installed using Docker, and TTRSS is one of them. TTRSS images are published to Docker Hub, and if you have Docker installed on your local machine or server, the installation is very simple and this guide can help you get it installed. It requires a little patience, but it's deceptively easy. If you need a $100, 60-day credit to use DigitalOcean droplets and other cloud products, the link is in the description. If you like this project, don't forget to support them in Patreon. They ask for a small donation, but these donations and also your active participation in their community are very important to keep this project alive and updated. There are some things you won't get with tiny tiny RSS that Google Reader offer. For example, you won't get such a broad array of third-party apps and clients. Sadly, tiny tiny RSS can't be used on your favorite desktop or mobile reader like Reader or Newsbomb. Plus, it's definitely harder to set up than just importing all your feeds to Feedly. Even so, if you want the ultimate control over your news reading, and you want something that will never shut down on you, tiny tiny RSS is worth setting up. That's it for now. Do you know any other self-hosted feed aggregation and syndication platform that is better than TTRSS? You can share that with us in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech debates like this one.